The value of history in society today, as one who teaches undergraduates at the university level, I'm always shocked at how little they know. They've come out of grade 12 social studies, and some have had really progressive teachers who really happen to be into the province in some way. But a lot of, they'd see, I'm not, I haven't really dug into the British Columbia high school curriculum, but I often find they're quite surprised. Oh, you know, and some naturally don't know because they make, they come from Ontario or elsewhere, in, you know, or the United States. But I'm always surprised at how little they know about our amazing province. And so I really like to feel that when they've come away from this, and I, one comment last time, just last week, I really like to a, come from, an, I teach in environmental studies as well, and they all have uh, double major, so many aren't history students. They're biology and geography and political science. And one is in her fourth year, and she she came away sort of thinking, "Oh, I, I missed the boat. I really wish that I had become a history ma major." I thought, "Well, we missed the boat by missing you," because I think we really do in this department feel the value of how can you understand the one percent and the ninety nine percent argument in British Columbia, which is being floated well in the, here in North America. If you don't understand people complaining about that in 1910, you know, the hope in 1910 that there'd be a revolution because too much wealth was in the hands of too few people. And that we are built on, on a working class, pretty ma gendered, male gendered uh, population with resource extraction at the forefront, leading the way from the fur trade to the gold rush to the... Uh, to the building of railroads and improving ra travel infrastructure so we could then to get at the minerals and all the rest of it with indigenous people being trashed along the way. You know, I love Cole Harris's, you know, we have to, idea that we have to see this province as, uh, in terms of settlement and resettlement, re it's, it's dispossession and repossession. It's those two terms. If we can leave students really walking away thinking, I'm going to walk through my province, feeling that, that I am, a, you know, there's a, there, there's a settler component and there's an indigenous component. We have to understand how those two components were worked and reworked th through the last uh, two centuries. And it bothers me even when I wander through the community in an office not long ago where somebody saw me reading something related to what I do and, oh, you do read British Columbia history. Oh, yes. And this is an older elderly woman who's lived here for quite a long time. What an interesting topic, she said. And I said, yeah, it is, really. Um, can you suggest a book that I might read to learn more about it? And she's living in my neighborhood in central Saanich. And I'm thinking, gosh, you know, where do I start? Isn't this sad? Why aren't we all sort of consuming this good literature? It's not all... Maybe because it's published by academic presses, but I think that many of us write. I would think that John Lutz's McCook, for example, should be a book that people can read, uh, that he, he certainly aims it for and does public talks around it. He, I know he wants to draw in the local public readership, uh, but I, I certainly write with that in view. Anything I've published, I'd like to think that it's not going to be just aimed at a little collection of specialized readers. It bothers me that it's not more out there. And uh, I came away thinking maybe Cole Harris is making native space, which is the history of reserve making in our province. That's what I suggested to her. And another book that he's that he wrote prior to that called The Resettlement of British Columbia. I thought that kind of covers um, some important chapters of our history. Uh, in, in a way that that the average reader could embrace. But I was just mentioning Chad Reimer's new book on the history, historiography of this province, just how does the history get written and told. And when you go to the library and you, you see these way, you know, collection after collection after collection dealing with Canadian history, what, how do we read them? How do you, I, I think read them with a critical eye, see what the Victorians and the... Edwardians were thinking when they were first settling our region. How are they thinking about it? And how are they thinking about presenting its history at that time? That's to me really quite fascinating. And uh, how has it changed over the decades? So when you dip into what our, our young historians, new his, newer historians are writing now, I just hope that it's exciting. Adele Perry on the Edge of Empire, really important way to think of British Columbia as settled by these 
collections of mostly 20-year-olds coming from all over the world and landing in little communities like Spence's Bridge, where none of them, they were Japanese, they were Italian, they were, they, they were Shetlanders who could hardly speak English in a way that it was, you know, in a dialect that could be understood. They were, they were you know, some, some Americans, some, uh, um, some it's French, all with, they were, this, these were their first languages, all gathered, huddled together there trying to sort of figure out where they were and where they were going to go and how this was going to serve them or not. It's a fascinating story.